Coming up at number 10, we have fail flashing. Quite often, all it takes to survive a gank or a team fight is a nice simple flash over a wall. You may have made that flash a thousand times before, but this time, bam, you fail flash right into the wall. Your enemies then swiftly kill you once they've all stopped laughing at you. <clears throat> It has to be one of the most humiliating ways to die, but since the game got sandbox mode, there's no reason to not practice those flashes. Looking at you. Coming in at number 9 now, we have Chasing a Singed. There's one rule in League of Legends that everyone has to learn. You do not chase a singed. Singed and his poison trail were specifically designed to hurt people who try and chase him. And don't think you're going to be able to get in front of him either, because between his adhesive slow, his fling, his insanity potion, and ghost, you're not gonna catch him and you will almost definitely die. Basically, if you can't kill him right away, just let him go. Sins just wasn't the one for you. All right, at number eight now, guys, we have tanking a turret. I know we've all done this before. You're attacking a turret, the minions all around you are tanking it, everything's going well, and then, oh wait, all the minions are dead. It's hitting me now. Oh, I'm dead. This is something a lot of new players seem to struggle with. You gotta learn to keep your eye on that minion wave around you, but I've also seen very experienced players do exactly the same thing. Coming in at number seven now, we have killing your teammates with you. So, you finish a team fight, your team's health bars are all flashing low, you end up with a zillion or Tristana bomb ticking over your head, you're doomed, you're done, it's GG. You need to die a nice, graceful death by yourself. Don't kill your allies by running towards them as the bomb explodes. This is not only a dumb way to die for you, but also a dumb way to kill your entire team and then probably lose you the game. But, uh, that's never happened to me. Okay, coming in at number six now, guys. We have dying to the jungle creeps. Dying to neutral minions is one of the most embarrassing things that can happen to someone in this game, especially if you're the jungler. It's kind of like your job to kill them. Unlike being killed by an enemy player, you can choose to stop fighting a jungle creep as soon as you see your health bar is dipping too low. It's kind of like a built-in warning system. But the greed is often too strong and we end up dying to red buff. Don't worry though, it even happens to the pro players. Moving on to number 5 now, we have taking an enemy bard's portal. If you're chasing a bard and he uses a portal to get back under his turret or to get to his teammates, you better be pretty confident you can win that fight. So many players end up getting tunnel vision when they chase a low health bard that they forget one key thing. He's probably taking a portal to where he's going to be safe, not where you're safe, and you'll probably die. Next up at number four now, we have dying during a TP. This one goes out to all my top laners watching this, but also any mid laners, any TF players, and just about anyone who has ever teleported from one side of the map to the other. Sometimes get so focused on where you're about to be that you don't pay any attention to where you currently are, and you could be getting killed. There aren't many things that feel worse in this game than going to make a sick TP play bot lane and then having to stare at a grey screen as your enemy laner spams their laugh emote. Brutal. Moving on to number three now, we have getting killed by Thornmail. Thornmail is a tank item that hurts enemy players when they auto attack the person with the Thornmail. Now, if the tank is tanky enough, the enemy players can end up taking a lot of damage to themselves. They can even kill themselves. It's one of the most humiliating ways to die in the game because nobody actually killed you. You killed yourself. Thornmail is suicide. Coming in at number two now, we have standing to close to the enemy fountain. No matter how badly a game is going, you're usually safe on your spawning fountain because of the insanely strong lasers that just destroy enemy players who get too near. I've been in games though where an enemy player gets too arrogant and steps a little bit too close to the fountain and gets deleted. And then we all spawn and the comeback begins. Remember guys, always step away from the fountain, it will only ever hurt you. And finally at number one now, we have the Teemo Mushroom. What else? Every other type of death in League of Legends is kinda epic in some way. Being dunked by a Darius ult, lasered to death by Velkoz, or swallowed whole by Tam Kench. But you know what's not cool? Dying because you stepped on a mushroom. Every League player has experienced that infuriating moment where you step on a mushroom on low HP and the poison starts to tick away 
reset your health. There is no epic battle that kills you, you just died to a small poisonous mushroom as Timo giggles somewhere in the distance. Starting off at number 10, we have drinking yourself to death. Yes, you can drink and get drunk in GTA 5. It's a common activity for many of the characters and NPCs, but don't drink too much, you can die. The GTA Online protagonist can carry around Pisswasser beer with them, meaning they can get drunk anytime and anywhere. There are plenty of warnings that you're getting too drunk in the game, and if you keep going, you can die. And whose fault was that? Don't blame the pisswasser. At number 9 now, we have flying into the blimp. There are a lot of things flying around the skies above Los Santos, but none of them are more obvious to see than the bright yellow and blue atomic blimp. If you're flying another aircraft and you crash into it, there's really no excuse, is there? There's also no chance of survival as that thing is filled with a lot of hot air. You don't bash a blimp and live to tell the tale. At number 8 now, we have getting out of a moving vehicle. This one is pretty simple self-explanatory. It doesn't matter if you're driving a car, you're flying a plane or a helicopter, suddenly exiting a vehicle will almost certainly result in death. Experienced players may do this for fun though, maybe they're trying to land on a building or pull off a trick, but new players might just accidentally hit the wrong button and find themselves smashing their face on the road, wondering where it all went wrong. And that's pretty dumb. Next up at number 7 now we have tripping over. I'm not really sure what the coding is that makes this happen, but you can just kind of jump in the air and then just fall to your death sometimes. It doesn't really make much sense. I've seen people survive falling out of helicopters in this game, but then just die because they jumped on the pavement. Very weird. And now, coming in at number six, we have jumping off everything. If you get pushed off a building by your friend or rammed off a cliff by a car, that's not really your fault. It's excusable, but jumping to your death yourself? Yeah, that's pretty dumb. But if you still want to do it, you've got plenty of options. You can find the highest building or Mount Chiliad and just throw yourself right off if you want. At number 5 now we have trying to steal fighter jets. Fighter jets are one of the most highly guarded vehicles in the game. If you break into the compound where they're kept, you've got about 15 seconds before all hell breaks loose. There will be a lot of guys with guns, there will be aircraft and there will be anti-aircraft turrets trying to take you down once you get into the plane. And unless you have a very very good plan, they will take you down. I kind of understand them though, I personally hate it when people try and steal my jet planes. So annoying. At the number 4 Fourth spot now, we have picking a fist fight with a gang. As a general rule, if it might kill you in real life, it might very well kill you in GTA 5. One of the best examples of this is walking up to a street gang and trying to get into a fist fight. You might have brought your fists, but they will have brought guns, and they'll shoot your fists off, and then they'll shoot you. It ain't worth it. At number three now, we have blowing yourself up. Some people love bullets, while others prefer explosives. You've got everything in this game, from grenades to rocket launchers, and they're all very good at blowing up your enemies and also anything near the explosion, including you. I'm sure we've all stood a little bit too close to that grenade or didn't point the rocket launcher quite high enough and ended up as a smouldering pile of flesh. Rough. Okay, coming in at number two now, we have being killed by sharks. Now if you're walking around the city and a gang member starts on you, that's not really your fault. The game's storyline puts you in a lot of dangerous areas, but if you get killed by a shark, you really have to want that. You need to either boat, jet ski, or even just swim way out into the water and get right up in a shark's face before it attacks you. And it always does. This is what I find crazy, even the invincibility sheet won't stop a shark from killing you. I think that's the game's way of showing you just how dumb you've been. And finally at number one now we have forgetting your parachutes. Again, it's quite funny how this is a fatal mistake in real life and GTA 5. What a coincidence. If you plan on jumping out of a plane in the game, this is the single most important thing you need to remember to bring. Forget the flashy jumpsuit you just bought or the helmet, that will only make you look like a fashionable corpse if you don't remember your parachute. I think the worst part about this death is the fact that you instantly realise you messed up as soon as you jump out of the plane, but you just have to kind of sit there for a minute and plummet towards your inevitable death. At least that gives us time to think about how dumb we are. Coming up at number 10 now, we have starving. Nothing makes you feel more stupid in the game than slowly starving to death in Minecraft because you didn't prepare enough food before your hunger meter reached zero. Everyone knows that you can starve to death in the game. There's food literally everywhere for you to get and yet somehow we all seem to get so caught up in exploring, building and crafting to take a second to just look at how hungry we are. Never ever skip Minecraft breakfast. At number 9 now, we have falling 
off your own building. Everybody wants to have an epic home in Minecraft, don't we? Nice walls, nice floor, and you know, make it really tall. That means you're gonna be pretty high up, especially if you want three floors or more. See there, you're putting the finishing touches onto a roof, just a few more blocks to go, and oh no, you slip and fall to your blocky death. I learned this one the hard way many, many times, but now though, I always build scaffolding around the edges of my house. Ah, no more messing around. This isn't a game. At number eight now, we have drowning. Drowning is perhaps the most frustrating way to die in the game, but you can't say you weren't warned. Every single game, and even real life, teaches you that you can't hold your breath forever. I'm sure we've all had that panic moment in Minecraft of being underwater in the game and realizing that your three bubbles of breath are not gonna be enough to get you back to the surface. One time, I was about to drown in the game, and then I died from starvation instead. I'm a noob. Coming in at number seven, flowing lava. Sometimes people fall into natural lava in the game. It happens, I can forgive that. But flowing lava is slow. There really is no excuse to die to flowing lava unless your keyboard or controller just stops working. Also, if lava is flowing over fresh ground, that means you must have done something to make that happen. So, in a way, this is doubly dumb. At number six, we have eating zombie flesh. Now, we've already talked about dying from starvation already, but you guys should never get so hungry in the game that eating zombie Zombie flesh is a good idea. Yes, it does restore two hunger bars if you're actually starving, but there is a whopping 80% chance that you will get food poisoning, which will kill you if your health is low enough. Now normally, eating proper food will save you in this situation, but if you're already eating zombie flesh, I doubt you have proper food. Or maybe you do, and you're just weird. At number five now, we have sleeping in the nether. I learned the hard way that if you put a bed down in the nether and try to sleep on it, it will explode, like TNT. Now obviously, if your health is low enough, this explosion will kill you. Every single day, countless Minecraft players around the world finally build a portal and enter the nether. They fight off pigmen, and they collect precious minerals, only to have their life brutally ended by an exploding bed. They should probably teach this in schools. And number four now, burning your own house down. This one comes from personal experience. I once spent days building my perfect little log cabin. The final touch was a nice fireplace. I lit the fire. At the same moment, I realized the back of my fireplace was made of wood. By the time I came back into the room with a bucket of water, the room was on fire. And then so was I. My pet pig survived, but I did not. Has anyone else ever set their houses on fire? Please don't tell me. I'm the only one. All right, at number three now, we have gravel. I'm sure you all know, gravel will always fall down if there is no other block below it. And, as I'm sure you also all know, if you remove a block above you, then all that gravel will come down on your head. If you're in an enclosed space, or you simply don't move out of the way quick enough, you will die. Presumably from choking to death on the gravel. I'm not really sure how that works, but yeah. Death by gravel, not exactly heroic. At number two now, we have dying in a tree. <laughs> this one will sound very weird if you've never played Minecraft before, but basically, if you plant a sapling, and you stand on the sapling, and then you place bone meal on it to make it grow, it will grow very quickly, and you'll suddenly find yourself in the middle of a tree, suffocating to death. I love this one, because a lot of the things we talked about in this video involve dying underground, or in a fire. Pretty intense things. This death involves being killed by a tree. Hmm, you got killed by a tree, that you just planted. That's pretty embarrassing. But I think the dumbest way to die in Minecraft at number one is dying to your own TNT. If you die because of TNT, it wasn't a game that killed you, you killed yourself. TNT can be found in temples and other natural structures, but 99% of the time it's made by the player and then the player ends up killing themselves with it. There's no zombies involved, there's no starving, drowning, lava, or some other game mechanic. You chose to craft that TNT knowing full well what it was for, and you still managed to get killed by it. Every time that happens, a creeper is watching, just shaking its head in disappointment. And number 10 is Until Dawn, Jessica's Deaths. Until Dawn is a game where your decisions affect whether or not you'll be able to keep the whole cast of characters alive to the end of the game. Or just some of them. Or kill off all of them. It really depends on what you choose. That whole butterfly effect thing is in full force here. And most of the deaths in the game are pretty brutal. Considering it's a horror game, it makes sense. Surprisingly, a lot of these deaths include being decapitated. Most of the teens you control in the game are kind of dumb when it comes to making decisions too, with a few exceptions. But now on to our focus, which is Jessica. She's a special character. Not only is she the stereotypical blonde bimbo, but pretty much anything you do with her leads to her dying and getting her jaw ripped off. You got chased through the forest by a mysterious creature? Yeah, 
sure she's still down to have sex with Mike, but not actually because she doesn't end up having sex with Mike no matter how hard you try. And then she just gets dragged away by a Wendigo before anything can happen, and then she eventually gets her jaw ripped off if you don't play your cards right, which is most of the time. She's like the character that everyone ends up getting killed. And also for this game, honorable mention to moving the controller at any point in the game when you're told to stand still and dying because of it. Literally, if you just let it vibrate on its own, it will kill you. And at number 9 is Impalement in Lara Croft Tomb Raider, the 2013 one. Throughout this game, you'll occasionally encounter rapids, which can have pretty dire consequences if you get washed away by them. And one dire consequence specifically, brutal impalement. This one makes the list for just being over the top with the ridiculous way that Lara meets her end. Harsh. Also, another honorable mention, Death by Wolves. These little can ruin your gameplay right off the top if you don't figure out how to end them first. It seriously left me stuck for like an hour. It was really embarrassing. And at number 8 is Earthworm Jim, The Falling Cow. So while this isn't a death that the player can experience mid-game, it's a death that is A, still a dumb way to die, and B, makes the whole plot of the game, well, kind of inconsequential. So after you save the princess at the end of this Earthworm Jim game, a cow falls on her, killing her. And if being hit by a cow didn't actually kill her, the rocky ledge they're situated on breaks, falling into the lava below. So, like, she's definitely dead. And it also kills the cow! And it makes all of your hard work for nothing. Frustrating or comic genius? You guys tell me. And hey, at least Jim got a shiny crown out of it. In at number 7 is Super Smash Bros Brawl, Yoshi eating you. Super Smash Bros Brawl came out in 2008 for the Wii. And similar to other Smash Bros games, each character has their own unique moveset. Yoshi's special attack in this game is to literally eat you and then immediately poop you out as an egg. While this doesn't entirely kill you, it can definitely finish you off if the circumstances are right, and leave you disgruntled that you got beat by a dinosaur's digestive tract. Not even gonna question the scientific repercussions there. And at 6 is Left 4 Dead 2, falling off a ledge. Now this can be applicable to pretty much any Left 4 Dead game, but we're focusing specifically on 2 here. So gravity can be a bitch. In Left 4 Dead, it's possible to fall to your death while trying to avoid being killed by zombies. And if your teammates can't help you, or they get knocked off a ledge themselves, it leaves you susceptible to being attacked by a zombie while you hang on for dear life. And at number 5 is Death by Guards from the Elder Scrolls games. And in particular we're looking at Skyrim here, because it tends to be the most ludicrous. Ever accidentally shout and send a guard flying? I can never go back to Markarth for this reason. All the guards want me dead, and it's just not fun. So it doesn't help if you try to defend yourself either. The more you fight it, the worse it gets in terms of guards on your ass and your charge. So it's best to just bribe them. That is, if your speech skill is advanced enough to do that, and end it there. Or face a likely death by guys who all became guards because they took an arrow to the knee. And sometimes if you try to surrender and lower your weapon, they will still attack you. Although if you attack a civilian, this usually stops that, but still, they're aggressive. And there's a lot. And at number 4 is wildlife. What kind of list would this be if we didn't touch on all the ways to die by wildlife in video games? So this number is encompassing a whole lot of games here. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Mountain lions in GTA 5. Randomly generated and completely absurd hostile creatures, including fish, in No Man's Sky. Pretty much everything in Skyrim, including giant spiders. Fun. And my personal favorite? Death by Bear and Red Dead Redemption. Doesn't matter how far in the game you progress as John Marston, no matter what, if a bear gets you, you're likely done for good. Although there are some guns that can blast them away if you get a shot in. Incredibly frustrating? Damn right. Realistic? Yeah. Incredibly frustrating? Definitely. And at number 3 is Eaten by Rats from Dishonored. Dishonored takes place in a city called Dunwall, an industrial city being ravaged by a plague and rat infestation, which has wiped out half of the city's population. So naturally, they're an annoying threat to keep in mind. And it gets pretty brutal sometimes. These rats seem to have taken a liking for human flesh, which is super unsettling, but still pretty useful if you're not the one being eaten. You can learn a spell in Dishonored Corvo called Ravenous Horde that actually lets you summon in a rat horde, which does this. Oh, doesn't that look like a fun time? In at number 2 is Missing the Leap of Faith from any Assassin's Creed's game. In the Assassin's Creed games, a leap of faith is one of the more impressive abilities available to your free running hero, in which you dive off an immensely high structure and land unharmed into cushioning material. Typically hey, it's a pretty fun maneuver to do. But sometimes that leap of faith can really test your faith and turn to a total fail. And finally at number 1 is the eye poke machine from Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 is a sci-fi horror survival video game that came out in 2011. In one part of the game, in order to progress, protagonist Isaac has to enter this terrifying eye poking machine. And in order to survive, you need to line up the laser precisely with Isaac's eye, then lower the needle down real slow so it can be properly injected into his eyeball. But of course, Isaac is kind of freaking out and moving his eyes around quite a bit, making it quite a challenge. I mean, can you blame him? I'd be terrified too if I was in his shoes. So if you fail to do this, the machine gets sinister on your ass. And machine is like, whoa there buddy. 